This is Geometry, Chapter 8, Section 6, in which we will study the Law of Sines and the Law of Cosines. Earlier in the chapter, we've worked with trig ratios to do right triangle stuff. We can also use them in non-right triangle situations, but we need a couple of more rules. And the first one is called the Law of Sines. And they gave it to us in the form of Theorem 810. If our triangle has three sides A, B, and C that are across from angle A, angle B, and angle C respectively in the same order, then it turns out that sine of angle A over side A is the same as the ratio of sine angle B to side B, which is the same as sine angle C to side C. You don't use all three of these in a problem at one time. You typically only use two. You'll either use like A and B together, or B and C together, or A and C together. But the ratio of sine of the angle to the side opposite is the same, regardless of which angle you're talking about. So let's find our missing side x here. We have two angles, one of which is across from the missing side. We don't know our third angle that's across from this side, but we can do a little subtraction from 180 and find out that angle. So we'll do that. Now we can set up our ratios sine of 86 over 14, those two go together, sine of 31 over x, those two go together. Well, do a little cross multiplying, and I went ahead and punched in those values as I went, mostly in the interest of time. Do a little arithmetic, and divide, and we find out the missing side, or the side we want is 7.225. Okay. Let's try another one of these. We have a side and we have an angle across from it. That's a good sign. We have a side. We don't know this angle, but once again we can subtract from 180 to find it. Now we can set up ratios. Sine of 31 is to 6.8 as sine of 125 is to x. Cross multiply doing the trig as I go in my calculator. Clean up and divide. The second law that we need to use is the law of cosines. Now the law of cosines is a little more involved. Again, we have our sides A, B, and C across from angle A, angle B, and angle C. All three of these equations are true. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times cosine of A. Or you can read the other two. Notice the side we're working on over here corresponds to the angle that we're taking the cosine of. Again, you won't use all three of these in a problem. You'll use one of them. And the one you'll use is kind of up to you. It's up to what you have in the problem, really. Okay. This is a special form of the Pythagorean Theorem. You see the Pythagorean Theorem hiding right here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This factor adjusts for the fact that it's not a right triangle. So let's apply the law of cosines here. We have an angle. We're missing the side across from it. But in this case, we have two other sides. We don't have another angle. If I had another angle, I would be setting up law of, cosine, or law of sines. Since I don't have that information, I don't have a choice. I have to go to cosines. 
since I have the side across from the angle, that's what I need to work from first. C is the angle, so little c is the side. Now I'm going to plug in what, I'm, what I know. I know this side is x. These two sides are 9 and 11. Minus 2 times a is 9 times b is 11 times cosine of 28. Doing some arithmetic, cosine of 28 is 0.883 according to my calculator. Combining that in my calculator and then taking the square root, I find out that that side over there is 5.212. Let's do one where we have to find the angle, because people always get tripped up in this scenario. We're looking for angle J. Well, if I'm looking for this angle, and I know this side, that tells me who goes by itself. The side across from the angle we know, or we, we need in this case, goes over here by himself. So 1.9 squared equals the other 2 squared minus 2 times the two sides times cosine of the angle. Do a little arithmetic. Do a little more arithmetic, collecting up terms and such. Now here's where people make a mistake. They try to subtract these two numbers. 6.1 minus 5.46. You can't do that. This has another thing attached to it, so these are not like terms. The trick is you have to subtract the 6.1 over to the other side. Then divide by the negative 5.46. Now we have cosine x equals this, so we can take the inverse cosine of that value. And my calculator tells me it's almost 63 degrees. Okay, so make sure you don't try to combine these two numbers together because it does not work. You'll get the wrong answer 100% of the time. Let's do one where we have to do all three angles. Okay, we have to find all the missing information. We have all three sides, so we're missing the angles. And we don't know that we have a right triangle, so we're going to have to do a little bit more work here. What we're going to have to use is the law of cosines. And we can pick any one of these three sides to be the uh, side by itself. It's up to us which angle we choose to work on. I chose to work on angle A first. No particular reason other than A comes first in the alphabet. That's the only reason I picked it. So if I'm working on angle A, side A goes by itself. Side B and side C go together. 2 times B times C times cosine A. Now we do a little arithmetic. I just punched all these into my calculator combined these, and I went ahead and subtracted them over all at once. Mostly in the interest of space on the screen here. So I subtracted the 75 change, and I subtracted the 86 and change. Then divided by, next step, divide by the negative 161. Take the inverse cosine, and I find out angle A is almost 69 degrees, 68.944. Okay. Now that I have angle A, I've got an angle and a side that goes with it. I can do law of sines now. Sine of angle A divided by side A equals sine of angle B that I don't know divided by side B. Well, now if I do a little cross multiplying, and I figured out sine of this as I went times 8.7. Again, in the interest of space on the screen. Sine of B equals that, so inverse sine gives me an angle of 52.749.
Well, now we can find angle C easily, just a little matter of subtracting. And subtraction gives us the third angle. Okay. Remember the secret here, guys, is to find one of the three angles. It's up to you which one you find. Had we chosen to work on angle B first, we would have gotten roughly the same answer. Maybe a little bit of difference in decimal places, but roughly the same answer. Neighborhood rule is still in play. Then from here, we would have found one of these two using law of sines. You only have to go through law of cosines once per problem, at most. Sometimes you don't even have to do that. But at the most, you'll have to do it once. Once you have an angle and a side across from it, you can do law of sines to get another angle. And then subtraction will get the third one. Okay. Now I could have put this on the bottom of the other page, but I chose not to. I chose to give you a separate page so you could put the table right here if you want to. It will tell They've got a nice table on 592 that will tell you when to use which tactics. Okay, whether to use law of sines, whether to use law of cosines, whether to just use sine, cosine, or tangent. All of that information is summarized for you on 592. It would be a really nice thing for you to have in your notes. So I left you plenty of space here to put that in. Um, as always, if you had questions along the way, especially calculator issues, I hope you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.